What's the best long-term storage media? Tips to avoid losing data in your lifetime. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where Ask Leo's lifetime started in 2003 and I've been answering questions ever since. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button down below to get access to all of the videos that I release throughout the week. And if at the end of this video you found it helpful, then by all means, hit that thumbs up button. Both of those things will help other people find the videos that they're looking for when they're searching on YouTube. So there's a lot of opinion about exactly what you should use to store something for a very long time. The question that I originally got, I currently have images stored on memory cards, thumb drives, CDs, and DVDs. Which is best long term? My off the cuff answer, probably none of the above. They all have a little bit of a problem. Optical media, CDs and DVDs, for example. Well, as it turns out, unless you've actually purchased archival quality, then they're fading as you sit. Over the years, they will actually start to deteriorate and the result is that the data on those disks may no longer be recoverable. That's kind of scary and exactly what you don't want when it comes to archival media. Similarly, when it comes to any kind of flash memory, I'm going to start though with the inexpensive SD cards, uh, micro SD cards, USB thumb drives. That kind of flash memory is typically relatively inexpensive and there's actually no good data that says it's going to last any length of time. It lasts long enough for us to use them, but when all of a sudden you're talking about keeping information for years, decades even, then cheap flash memory is actually not where I would want to place my bets. Now, there's an argument to be made that more expensive SSD, which is also a form of flash memory, could potentially last significantly longer. Again, the jury's not in on that one. The problem is that we just don't know. And once again, I'm not prepared to place a long-term bet with the data that I want to be able to read 20, 30, or 40 years from now. So my recommendation when it comes to long-term storage media, traditional hard drives. Traditional spinning disk magnetic hard drives. Yes, they probably do deteriorate over time, but the experience of many so far is that we really kind of sort of do understand how long they'll last, and it's a long time. They do use hard drives for long-term archival in a number of situations. So one thing to consider for long-term archives is to copy things to an external traditional hard drive and then store that thing somewhere. That's part of what I do. I don't do it very often. I do something else, which is something I would actually have you strongly consider almost instead of the external hard drives. And that's this. 20 years ago, I had data on floppies. Then I had data on CDs. And today I have it on external hard drives. The process, though, that caused that migration to happen is simply that at some point I realized, OK, floppy disks were out, compact disks were in, DVDs were in. I should copy everything over. So I copied all of the information from the floppy disks before they deteriorated to something else. Then a few years later, I realized that I was getting an awful lot of CDs and DVDs in a bucket downstairs. I decided it was time to migrate all that data to hard drives. So over the course of some amount of time, I carefully copied the contents of all those CDs and DVDs to an external hard drive. Now, those external hard drives are actually in use. They're connected to a machine that's running all the time. And that machine, every night, makes backup copies of all of that archived information. My expectation is that at some point in the future, I will migrate again to whatever the next 
best long-term storage solution turns out to be. Maybe it is those SSDs that we're playing with right now. Maybe it's something else that we haven't even seen yet. But the point is that every so often, the data that I care about the most, which generally refers to my photographs, gets copied, it gets refreshed, it gets placed on new media before the old media wears out. That's really the only way to ensure that your data will be there when you need it 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 years from now. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is the cloud, right? The cloud online storage is kind of sort of its own thing. And it is, in fact, a part of my long term backup strategy. My photos, those things that I care about the most, are, in fact, stored in the cloud. I happen to have them on Dropbox. The issue there is that Dropbox, when it comes to backing up, is really only one place. The same is true for any cloud storage provider. They have their own backups, but their backups are not for you and me. You and I are still responsible for making sure that our data is backed up. If somebody hacks into my account and deletes all my files, I can't be assured that Dropbox or OneDrive or any of the others will restore that data from their backups. Like I said, their backups protect them. My backups protect me. And that's why I continually refer to online storage, be it Dropbox or OneDrive, as only one place. And that's for the statement, if the data is in only one place, it's not backed up. So I have my photographs on hard disks in my basement, two as it turns out. I have it on other hard disks, but that's more of a side effect of how I access them. And I have them all in the cloud. Now, the neat thing about the cloud is that we don't care, we don't know what storage technology they happen to use. They use whatever is convenient for their needs. Dropbox uses hard disks of some flavor. OneDrive probably uses something else. And I'm absolutely convinced that the hard drives that stored my photos on Dropbox, say, 10 years ago, they're long gone. Those hard drives have been replaced with newer ones, newer servers, whatever. They're handling this migration of technology transparently and in the background. So using OneDrive or Dropbox or any online service provider is one way to have another copy of your data placed somewhere that is independent of the storage media. As long as that service exists, as long as your account isn't hacked or lost, then your data remains accessible to you. But it's only one place, so it needs to be an additional place alongside the backups, hard disks, whatever it is you keep yourself on premises. Now, there's another aspect to archival that I think a lot of people, I do get comments on it from time to time, and I think it's an important one to address, and that is formats. One of the things that happens is not only can I not read, say, the floppies that I had 20 years ago, the actual format of the information on those floppies, some of them, isn't even supported if I did have a drive. That is true for hard disks as well. Well, hard disks, for example, these days are usually formatted with either the NTFS or EXFAT filing system. Do we know that in 40 or 50 years, there will be machines that can read that? I don't know. I think it's a pretty safe bet just because so much of our information today is, but it's an interesting bet. And it's one that periodically migrating to the most recent storage technology actually solves. If 20 years from now, if there's a completely different storage system that uses a completely different disk format, copying all of my information onto that storage basically makes this problem go away. I don't need to rely on the old NTFS or EXFAT hard disks. I've got this new whatever it is that has been invented 20 years from now. The other one that's a little harder to solve is file formats. Will there be support for .doc files in 50 years? I honestly don't know. Again, it would seem like there would be, given that it is so ubiquitous, it is so popular, but is it something that you really want to count on? Especially if you're not talking about file formats like docx, the, the ones that we think of often as being ubiquitous and everywhere. 
If you've got some uh, um, obscure program that you rely on that stores its data in a proprietary format, I can pretty much guarantee you that that data probably won't be readable 50 years from now. Now, you may not care. That's fine, but it's something to think about. It's one of those cases where if your data is in a proprietary format and it's something that you want to archive, maybe you want to save it in a less proprietary format. Saving your data as maybe CSV, which is just a text file, which is one of the fundamental file formats that I suspect will last pretty much forever. If you have a document, be it in an obscure word processor or some other thing, maybe saving it as PDF is the way to go. Maybe printing to PDF is the way to go for even more obscure file formats that don't natively support saving to PDF. PDF is one of the things that I actually am placing my bets on. And I say that because there is so much information, historical records today that are printed using PDF file format. Even though it may not be a common file format, it may not even be used 50 years from now, I'm pretty convinced that there will in fact be PDF readers. There will be technology capable of interpreting the PDF files and displaying their contents. The one kickback I always get when I talk about digital archiving and digital backup and saving information digitally is, you know what? Paper is always readable. I agree, sort of. The issue is paper is flammable. Paper disappears for a variety of reasons, not related to technology. Your house could flood, your house could burn up, you could lose the paper, you could do whatever. You could make photocopies, I suppose, but that all of a sudden becomes even more work than just scanning the files and storing the digital copies somewhere else. So if paper makes you feel comfortable, by all means, go for it. But if, like me, you are natively digital, you are almost paperless, then take some steps to ensure that the information you're saving today is either on media that will last a long time, that it is potentially copied from media to media that will last a long time before the prior media wears out, and consider whether or not you have enough copies in enough different places to make sure that that data is not lost because of fire, theft, flood, or whatever. I hope this spurred some thought. That's really what it boils down to. I want you to think about these things as you talk about your own backup strategy and as you think about exactly who wants these files in the future. If you've got kids or grandkids, they'll appreciate what it is you save. If and it's very possible, maybe, future historians may wonder what the heck was going on with our generation and they'll be using their digital archives to answer some questions. Maybe your information will be part of what they dig up. At any rate, like I said, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was thought provoking. For any updates, for related links, for comments, and for more ideas, visit askleo.com slash 5787. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.